Thank you, Dr. Richards. I've just got some questions around the national assessment of chemicals associated with coal seam gas extraction in Australia. Um, the department told me the other day that uh, even though that was due to be delivered last year, it's now on track to be finalised approximately mid-2015. Is that uh, your understanding as well? Brian Richards, uh, Director, National Industrial Chemicals Notification and Assessment Scheme. Uh, yes, Senator, that's correct. Okay, mid-year. Great. Um, now, the department's currently got in front of it an application from Santos for an extra 6,100 wells um, in Queensland. Have they asked you to move along that national assessment of chemicals so that they can consider the results of that national assessment when they make decisions about the latest coal seam gas project in Queensland? Um, I've, Senator, I've had no um, correspondence with the Department of the Environment in those terms. Okay. Um, I might take up with them how they intend to make a decision without all of the relevant information about chemical impacts on, on health and environmental health. Uh, but thank you for confirming they haven't given you a hurry up. Um, will the assessment include shale and tight gas? No, Senator. And why is that? Uh, it was out of scope of the funded project. The project, as you know, um, was fu is funded by the Department of the Environment and mm. the scope <coughs> was defined at the beginning of the project. By the Department of the Environment? By, by the Department of the Environment. Okay. Um, and at that stage, I th my recollection is that there, there wasn't much in the way of shale exploration in Australia. Well, there's certainly a lot now. Do you, are, have you made any representations to them at the usefulness of extending the scope of the study to try to get ahead of the rush of shale and tight gas applications? Uh, Senator, we haven't made representations to the Department of the Environment. Uh, uh, it's important to understand that um, uh, the way the industrial chemicals uh, regulation scheme works is that there are uh, chemicals listed on the Australian Inventory of Chemical Substances, mm. which can be used for any industrial purpose, mm. um, subject to any conditions that are set mm. out in, in that inventory. Um, chemicals used um, in such exploration need to be on that list to be able mm. to be used unless they're submitted to us for an assessment prior to their use. Mm. But if, if it's proposed to use existing chemicals, it's, um, it doesn't require any assessment. Mm. Okay, and is that right that you're still not looking at combinations of chemicals? Um, it's outside the scope of this project. There are, there are no internationally agreed methodologies for looking at mixture yeah. effects. Okay, is looking at impacts on aquifers also outside the scope of the project? Uh, yes, Senator. What is within the scope of the project? The, the it seem to be looking at much. The, the scope of the project has been um, uh, explicitly defined and is listed on our website. Um, it's uh, an, an, an assessment that's examining the human health and environmental risks from chemicals used in drilling and hydraulic fracturing for coal seam gas extraction in Australia. Uh, and it's primarily related to um, examining the surface related human health and environmental risks from chemicals. That does seem a very strange distinction to make given that you're blasting the fracking chemicals underground ergo, wouldn't it be sensible to look at the effect on aquifers rather than just surface water? So, um, Senator, when, when uh, a risk assessment of, uh, is done, it's fundamentally a combination of um, mm. considerations between the hazard of a chemical, which are mm. the intrinsic properties of the chemical, and the exposure. Mm. And um, exposure needs to be modelled unless it can be directly measured. And mm. um, when this project was initiated, there were no suitable exposure models for doing deep uh, groundwater. As part of this project, the CSIRO has been developing methodologies and models for such work, but um, the actual risk assessment of the chemicals for that mm. use is not part of the current stage of the project. Okay. Well, could you perhaps on notice for me provide just a bit more information to the extent of your ability, and perhaps I'll take it up with CSIRO as well, um, the work that they're doing on developing models and how and if that's going to feed into a risk assessment that so anyone might... So, Senator, in the all the information about those models will be part of the final report of the project, which we expect to have released, as okay. you suggested, in mid-2015. Right, so you look at the modelling, but you won't actually apply the modelling to find out what the risk is. Uh, that's correct, in, in the scope of the funded project today. Okay, thank you. Let's hope you get some more funding to do a more comprehensive project in future. 
Um, so I'll just confirm that you're not looking either at the impacts of mobilising underground contaminants in fracking. Those. Um, so so uh, again, Senator. You're just looking at what gets blasted. There, there, in is, work, than what gets there is work being done by CSIRO in identifying um, geogenic chemicals, that mm -hmm. is, the chemicals mm -hmm. in the coal seam that are, mm -hmm. or in the rock that are mm -hmm. mobilised during the fracking process. Yep. Um, examination of the risks of those chemicals is outside the scope of NICNAS. NICNAS, they're not industrial chemicals, they're not chemicals right, that are being I used see. for an industrial well, purpose. Well, I'll take that up with CSIRO then. Thank you. Um, now, the Department of Environment told me last estimates that the national assessment would include a risk-based assessment of what might go wrong in relation to chemicals used in the CSG industry. So can I confirm that that, that is within scope? Yeah, at surface handling. Surface, surface and, surface and shallow groundwater. Okay. Um, and your website also talks, just back on geogenic, uh, geogenic contaminants, your website talks about that you will consider the preliminary environmental risk from geogenic geogenic contaminants to the extent of availability of data. Um, in your work to date, how comprehensive is the data? So the, so the in environmental risk assessment component of the project is actually being undertaken by the Department of the Environment. Okay. So um, I'm responsible for the human health risk assessment <coughs> components. Uh, Nick Nass is coordinating the overall project mm -hmm. um, and um, so they're my, my understanding is that, that those, the data, there were insufficient data available during the course of this project to do that particular component of the work. Indeed, so they probably shouldn't be issuing so many approvals if they don't know the answer I can't to comment the risks, on that, but um, yes, speculation that's not a matter so. for your, for your um, scope. Um, so just to confirm, so it's the Department of Environment that's doing the environmental risk analysis of how fracking is likely to mobilise those naturally occurring carcinogens? That's correct. Okay, I'll take that up with them. Thank you. And I'm almost finished. Thank you, Chair. Uh, am I right that the assessment's also going to develop models to predict the extent of fracture growth within coal seams? Yes, Senator, that's again, that, that's again part of the work that's being undertaken by CSIRO. Okay. Can you tell me anything about that, or shall I take that up with them as to what you found so far? Um, again, the outcomes of that part of the project will be described in the project report when it's published. Okay. Can't, there's no indications as yet that you can share. Uh, Senator, the release of the report contents is a matter for government. Okay. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Chair. Thanks.